Yeah, welcome back. Um, you're still on to Plus TV Africa, and the program is The Breakfast. Uh, it's time to bring you off the press. Sorry that we the segment delayed a little bit, but you know as it is, uh, what is making headlines is still making headlines. Uh, so we're being joined by Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a public affairs analyst that will be talking with us on uh, the... Um, on the program, on, on this segment. But before we welcome him, let's just take a look at, at the major headlines in every uh, newspaper that we are going to uh, talk about today. There are four major newspapers that we are going to be looking at. In the Punch newspaper is the first, and the major headline there is, poor Nigerians will hit 101 million without palliatives. That's according to the World Bank. And the writers there are, uh, as you have seen, the governor, uh, governor's IMF block subsidy removal demand cash transfer scheme for poor Nigerians and CBN uh, measures failed to tackle inflation in first six months of 2023, uh, the World Bank insists. We move from Punch to the Guardian newspaper. And the Guardian newspaper leads with another story or the same story in different words in the Guardian newspaper. 7.1 million Nigerians may become poorer as families face 5,700 Naira monthly loss. That is from uh, the Guardian newspaper. And then from the Guardian newspaper, we go to Business Day. Business Day has a re major report there, CBN NSA exposed in $616 million DAC dealings. And then leadership is the last one that we're going to be looking at this morning. And in the leadership, the major headline is Tinubu governors assure Nigerians of a better future. What else do we want except for a better future uh, for ourselves and our children, even the ones that are not born yet? Like I said, uh, we'll be talking today, or we're being joined by Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos. Mr. Tunde Kolawole, good morning and welcome to the program. Thanks for having me once again. Okay, uh, well, there are so many headlines that I would like to talk about, but let's begin with the punch. And the punch led with that uh, uh, story of fuel subsidy removal. Poor Nigerians will hit 101 without palliatives, that's according to the World Bank. And that same story is on The Guardian. And there they said that... Uh, so 7.1 million Nigerians may become poorer as families face 5,700 monthly loss. 5,700 naira monthly loss uh, because of the inflation and subsidy removal. So we'd like to have your comments on that. Um, Nigerians that will be poor or that will become poorer, the number is going higher and higher while the government is promising us a better future. What are your comments? Well, I think the World Bank is merely restating the obvious. You and I go to the market, we know what to use to buy the prices of things from eight years ago and what it is today. We also sometimes go by public transportation. And we know how much uh, the transport that have gone up uh, within this short while that the subsidy was said to have been uh, removed. Of us too, most of the schools are behind their, 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 their school fees. The public universities that people used to attend almost free are now charging fees, not just for tuition, but also for accommodation. And when you have the challenge that we have had in our hands of 33% uh, uh, unemployment all over the country and the canopy in inflation, and also the front page of most of these newspapers, the manufacturers of Nigeria have raised an alarm that so many multinational companies are planning to pull out of Nigeria. So when you add all these things together and all that, you begin to agree with um, the World Bank that so many Nigerians are going to be poorer with this removal of the fuel uh, and subsidy. There is no palliative that the government can give that can really cushion the effect of uh, this uh, subsidy removal. Why do I say that? From my experience, each time government said they have uh, increased their salaries and all that, the increase is usually not more than maybe 5,000 naira, between 5,000 and 10,000 naira for the civil servants who work in most of these um, uh, public places. And for the people in the private sector, 
the increases are not more than maybe 20,000 naira per head and the, and the what have you. And if you are talking about all these conditional or money transfer, take that money, what have you, and all that, how much is it the money that they are giving to some of these people? Most of it, 20,000, 15,000 naira, and what have you. How will that not be able to cushion the tragedy that this fuel subsidy removal has going to is already inflicting on the Nigerian people. If I were the government, I would find some other ways of really providing subsidies, maybe in the area of agricultural input, maybe in the area of uh, transportation, maybe with regard to medication, what people now pay in the different hospitals when they do have health challenges. So we are in serious trouble, very, very serious trouble. Mm. Mm. Except uh, the present government sits up, um, go and uh, find a way to really increase agricultural production, there might be very, very serious hunger in the land. And you and I have to know that wherever there is serious hunger, they are starting to be very, very... And the people will become restless. And we will, when people become restless, of course, uprising could be the next consequences, which we are not praying for at all. Mm. Okay, well, uh, even though the, um, the telcos have said that... Uh, they are not doing a price hike. Uh, we've also seen from uh, the, uh, not, uh, yeah, the telcos are saying right now that uh, there will be a price hike in because of the Naira devaluation. I don't trust them. I don't trust them. Why yeah, do I say I don't trust this them? Is, this is telcos. I'm not yeah, talking I about the, them. I'm not talking about discos, yeah, uh, the I, electricity people. Yes, uh, I know, I know, mm. I know. I know. Why do I say so? The discos are not insulated from the inflationary trends in the country. They are not insulated. They also have to buy spare parts with which to uh, run their plans. Furthermore, if the federal government increases the salaries of the, uh, the civil servants, the discos are also likely to increase the salaries of their workers. Of course, when the discos are buying uh, uh, motorcycles, when they are buying vehicles and all that to run their operations, it's not going to be bought cheaper than one million. It's not going to be bought at the old rate in which they are buying them. How would they absorb all these costs of, uh, of uh, running the plant? They will pass it to the average consumer that uh, consume their, uh, their services. So I think if in order not to raise a lot more, not to further fuel the tension in the land, and then to be seen to be raising the efforts of the government, not to create problems for the government, that is the reason why the gen are finally saying what they are saying. Sooner than later, they are likely to increase the tariff. The telecommunication company will also increase the tariff because they have to find a solution to the cost of running their plans and provide their services. Okay, well, it, it's looking really scary for Nigerians. If the Manufacturers uh, Association of Nigeria is complaining that a lot, of, a lot of international manufacturers will leave, and then the tariff in electricity will be hiked, uh, tariff in, in, in uh, telecommunications will be hiked, everything else in the market yeah. will be hiked, and the salary will not be hiked. Uh, even if it is, it is added, like you said, it might be just 5,000 naira and 20,000 naira, which is grossly inadequate. I usually give this example that when I started working here, from where I come from, uh, you can pay on a, on a, on a, in, a, in a car, a regular car, 300 naira to the island. Now, that same journey is going for 1,000, sometimes 1,200 naira in a regular car. I'm not talking about um, maybe a, a hailing, uh, cab hailing services or all, all that. So, which means that there is so much suffering that is going on or that will continue to go on in the land and all that. And in spite of this, the government is, is promising us that we are going to have a better future. Do you see this better future? Or you think it's just like a political gimmick? No, a better future is possible, my brother. Uh, very, very possible. But uh, it will uh, require that uh, the present government will step on the toes of so many of the allies in the country so as to be able to create a better future for our people. Is that what I is give happening you an right example. now? Is that what is the happening right now? The cost of governance. Is that what is happening right now in the hiring and firing? No, 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 no. It's not yet happening. It's not yet happening. Uh, maybe it will soon happen, but it's not yet happening. The kicking out of a Mephile, the kicking out of power, and the few of these other people, it's not enough to conclude that uh, we're beginning to see a revolution in turning the Nigerian landscape around. 
as I was saying, if the government is going to create a better future for us, they will have to step on so many tools. Uh, one is that um, the cost of governance would have to be reduced very, very drastically. Uh, you and I do know that a lot of us have been advocating for a long time now that we should have a unicameral, unicameral legislator. That is to say, match the Senate and the House of Representatives and also to reduce the number of people that are going in there. Our case is also that uh, people in some of these places, in the, especially in the House of Assembly, in the state and the local government, should be taking only seating allowances and not the salaries and all these um, uh, uh, jumbo pays that they get uh, uh, all the time. Take a state like a kitty state, I don't see any reason why a kitty state cannot be paid seating allowances for, 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 for the House of for the legislature or for the House of Assembly uh, members. And then you also go to some of these other poor things like Jigawa and what have you. How many laws do they make in a year? What is the impact of the law that they even make? Most times I've always said the time without number. The law, they don't really debate the principle of the law. When they have a law to make, they give it to we lawyers, we draftsmen, to draft those laws. And after we have drafted them, they, 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 they take the draft to the assembly and debate the principle of law. And then the impact of it. Is that the reason why you should be paying this kind of jumbo allowance for you? I mean, this jumbo pay uh, for all these people. So that is one area. The second area is that the cost of contracts in Nigeria is one of the highest in the land and the world. The cost of contracts in Nigeria is one of the highest in the world. So the government will have to look at the cost of contracts in Nigeria and make sure that that is actually brought down. You look at the paper. Each time a contract is awarded, you watch uh, the television, listen to the radio. Is it denominated in billion? Why is it denominated in billion? When most of the components that go into this contract doesn't come from abroad. You want to construct roads. You take the granite from here. You take the cement from here. You take the sand from here. Yet, all road construction in Nigeria, all city construction in Nigeria today is denominated in a billion. Furthermore, look at even uh, what is happening now. Uh, the Senate president is appointing chief of staff, this is press secretaries and what have you. We are as actual fact in all those ministries and transatters that you go to, including the National Assembly, they are already receiving servants who are trained to do the work of some of these people that the people that the politicians are again recruited. There are people who could do the work of chief of staff in the civil service. There are those who could do the work of the press secretary. There are those who could do the work of, uh, of the protocol uh, and that. So the new government would have to look at this area and find a way to pull down the cost of governance very, very discarded. Of course, in addition to what Gangote is doing with the refinery, the government must also find a way to resuscitate the early refineries. There are some refineries all over in some parts of the world that have been there for more than 100 years. And those refineries are still functioning. The Nigerian refineries are not 60 years old. So why is it that we cannot make them workable? Furthermore, the government is also taking the wrong steps and the wrong direction by saying that they are issuing licenses for people to import petroleum products in the country. If you say you have deregulated, if you say you have removed subsidy and not, it should be a free fall affair. Whoever has the resources should be able to go into the international market and move first to Nigeria. By the time you begin to do a licensing regime again, you are introducing corruption into it because people will have to lobby to get those licenses. And when people lobby to get those licenses and all that, of course, the cost of the lobby will pass to the average customer. Furthermore, it means that if somebody else could find some sources of bringing fuel into the country in a cheaper manner, they cannot bring it because they don't have the fuel. And you and I do know, the more you have water in the country, the, 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 the possibility that you cut the, 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 the prices, the pump prices in the different uh, petrol stations all over the country, the better for us. This I think uh, the government could do to really turn around the Nigerian landscape. Of course, we have to invest in agriculture. We are not doing enough in the area of agriculture. A nation that cannot feed itself, like uh, in North Korea, you are not an independent nation. When you depend on in importing everything that you actually require to eat and drink in the country, it's pretty too thick. So whether the president will be able to walk the talk, be able to step on the big toes of all these uh, bad cats that you have all over the country, I am here to see it. Okay, uh, well, uh, <clears throat> we are just uh, uh,
hurrying up to, to, to touch a lot of things that we need to touch. Uh, in both The Punch and The Guardian, we have uh, stories that will suggest that um, the ministerial list is not prepared uh, at all. In, in Punch, we hear that APC caucus and NEC will meet on July 10, uh, which gives us the idea that if they are meeting at that time, maybe it's to uh, look at the, the, the tentative list of uh, possible ministers. And we also have seen in The Guardian, the lobbyist Storm Bodilon for ministerial appointments, because yesterday the president was back in town uh, and he got to Bodilon, so everybody is now moving to Bodilon to do the lobbying uh, for who will become what minister <laughs> and all that. So uh, what does this tell us? There was some speculation that, there were speculations that immediately after Salah, maybe the ministerial list will be out. I may be wrong, but this gives me the impression that until July 10th, we will not hear anything about ministers or the list that will give us the ministers. What do you think? When uh, immediately elections are concluded and people are, and the executive arm of government is sworn in, it is logical to expect that the politicians who have won for the who won the different elections and all that will be waiting for their payback uh, 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 packages. So if people are lobbying for those ministers are appointment and lobbying to the commissioners in the different states of the federation, it should be uh, expected. Nobody goes campaigning for people. Nobody go investing. It is all our money on politicians and will not be expecting some payback time uh, one way or the other. The area I think we should be concerned with is that uh, Nigeria needs to really have uh, ministers from all the strategic states of the Federation, including Abuja. Do you need advisors from all the states of the Federation, including Abuja? In my humble opinion, it is not necessary. In fact, there is the advocacy that the different ministries should be collapsed and as we reduce the number of ministers and make it freer. First that, we don't have more than maybe 15 uh, ministers from the different parts of the country. And then you have the same number of corresponding uh, advisors and all. A situation in which the constitution has prescribed uh, uh, that you must have the uh, ministers uh, from the different parts of, uh, from all the countries of the tradition, including Abuja, is part of the, 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 the cost part of the high cost of running governance uh, in this country. Because when you look at uh, some of those things and all that, they are not adding value to us. And of course, too recently, uh, Mr. Professor Kremo, who was a Minister of State, has come out to say that uh, we don't need the portfolio of Minister of State in any of the ministries. That they are redundant, that they are not even being used as a spare tire. If somebody has been a Minister of State for about uh, four years, comes out to say that kind of a thing, I think we should listen to him. So these are areas we should look at, and not to, of course, the salaries and allowances that are paid to those ministers and all that, we require to pull in them. I have always advocated that the ministers, the policy are not, that should be earning the salaries of a civil servant, including the president and the vice president, and all the ministers. If the permanent secretaries are earning maybe, um, hypothetically, 500,000 naira in a month, then the ministers could be maybe 600,000 naira in a month. And then the president and what have you also uh, me something that is uh, a little bit higher. And uh, in their private life, when they eat, when they transport themselves, when they have visitors, they should finance it from their salaries and not that the bill should be picked up by the Nigerian state. Because that is what is happening. And when they cop, the Nigerian state or taxpayer will pay for it. When they sneeze, the Nigerian taxpayers will pay for it. When they are angry with their wives or spouses and all that, the Nigerian taxpayers are the ones that pay for those things. In other crimes and other places and all that, the President of the United States, for example, will pay for the dinner that he's given to his friends and relations. He will pay for his own medication. If he is traveling outside his official duty, he pays for it. And if he uses state uh, uh, machinery and vehicle to move around and all that, he will have to reimburse the state for those things. Those are the kind of things we require to do in this country to, to turn the country around. Yeah, I was just worried that at this time, this time there shouldn't be lobbying. We should be hearing definite uh, statements that the list is ready. If they're still lobbying now and the meeting is on, on the 10th no, of July, is, that means the 60 days might elapse before mm -hmm. we find that uh, list. Uh, anyway, let's... No, no, no. Yeah. My brother, there's nothing wrong with lobbying. At this time, I, I felt that all those things we set up a would have finished up. by now. 
See, like I was saying, there's nothing wrong with nothing. What we've got to say is that uh, we set up the standard. So if you want to be minister, these are the qualities that I want to see in the minister. These are the things that you must have. These are what is expected of you. If we even do some kind of interview for some of these people, another, it could be in summer. It is when a man has nothing and he needs those requisites, he needs those standards that are set and all that, then that he could get appointed as minister. But what happens now is that uh, the governors, the, the financiers of the party, and the politicians and all that, will put forward names of people that they want to appoint as a uh, as, uh, minister. Whether they have the requisite qualification or they don't have it. And that has not been too helpful at all. Okay, uh, let's move to another thing. Back in Lagos here, something that will be replicated in every state of the Federation in the shortest possible time is that motorists will be paying 1,000 Naira for proof of ownership certificate from July. Um, apart from the fact that uh, maybe all the other taxes that have been paid by motorists will not be uh, cancelled before that July, the, the, the statement is coming now and July is within this week. Uh, so I, I don't know how you feel about that, paying 1,000 Naira uh, from July. Honestly speaking, Nigerians are already overtaxed. If you know the kind of multiple taxations that are imposed on Nigeria, you would be shocked that we are still able to carry on with all these responsibilities at war and mill. And I ask you, when you have a vehicle, you take the vehicle, you you get a vehicle uh, particular on which your name is uh, inscribed. So if you have gotten a vehicle particular in which your name is inscribed and all that, what kind of proof of ownership again do you require? Why do you have to pay for proof of ownership again? Most times vehicles are registered in the name of their owner. So I'm, I am of the opinion that this is just a way I mean to really raise that for the government, which is like imposing additional burden on those who are vehicles in the country. And I think, don't think that is a really, really a necessary. Rather than impose more burden on people, we should be finding a way to really reduce this income. You do proof, I mean, you register your vehicle every year. You also will have to take it for some um, testing in some of these uh, places to make sure that they are roadworthy. The roadworthy thing and what have you. And that also costs some money. And then you also have insurance that you have to obtain eh, for some of these uh, vehicles. Okay, um, before we wrap up, there are two issues here I would like you to talk on br very briefly. Uh, first of all, uh, 2023 poll, INEC EU observers disagree over conduct of presidential election. We can find that in the leadership newspaper. Uh, EU, INEC have disagreed uh, over the conduct of presidential election. And we also heard that uh, one of the commissioners, the National Commissioner for Information, I, I think, uh, Festus Okoye, was saying that the glitch that happened in the uploading of the presidential election should not be blamed on INEC. Uh, they, they should not be blamed because of a glitch that happened in the uploading of the election results of the presidential election that was conducted on February 25th. So I'd like to hear your comments, how the EU observers are giving one report and INEC is disputing that report, and one of the commissioners is telling us that we should not blame them for a glitch that happened on election day? Well, uh, it's a very complex uh, issue. Uh, most times, when I make or the electoral act is uh, passed, and the INEC makes a guideline, uh, you find out that the average Nigerian politician usually begin to work and find loopholes to undermine whatever good intention, whatever good plan, whatever good program. I make my put on ground to ensure that they have a rich free uh, uh, election. I give you one example. A situation in which electoral officers, those conducting the election, are attacked and ballot boxes are carried away. Mm -hmm. That is not within the powers of the uh, of uh, INEC uh, to control. It's one of the security people that can help INEC to make or control that kind of a thing in the board. Or when people are buying votes, as the usually happen. It is not within the uh, powers of INEC to stop people from uh, buying votes. Only the security people can uh, rein in those who sell and those who buy uh, uh, votes. But with that as it may, INEC cannot be totally exonerated from the fiasco that was the last election that we had uh, in the country. 
I said you with trust as of a responsibility. To whom much is given, much is also expected. There was nothing I need ask for that um, and they were not given. And they had assured us that they are going to conduct a free and fair election mm -hmm. without any chief. They asked for the Bible, and then the Bible was prepared for them. And I remember before the elections were conducted, even when people in the National Assembly had doubt about the efficacy of the Bible. The Indian people were assuring uh, the National Assembly people and the entire Nigerian people, and also the electorate, that the Bible is uh, each free, is going to uh, ensure the security of the elections and what happened. So, at the end of the day, the council told us, if I forget, that for every Bible that is not working, there's a spare one to complement it, to replace it, if the one that is initially deployed is not functioning properly. So, if you have gotten all these assurances, and you have the caliber of people that we have in my neck as uh, the chairman and then as the uh, um, uh, commissioners and what have The kind of excuses that we got from them, uh, we shouldn't be getting it at all. I agree with you that um, the conduct of the last election isn't as far as what the Nigerian people expected there from my neck. And uh, the man who is chairman in India, if he came in there, I must say, when you compare the performance with Jega, the man who was formerly there and known that, mm. his performance has been a fiasco. Every election that he has conducted since he got in there has always been mm, a father in one controversy or the other. The kind of integrity that we saw when the guy was in charge, we have not been seeing that kind of integrity with uh, Mahmoud. So, to that person and know that, I think uh, should be very uh, accountable for whatever losses. Uh, that might have been with regard to this election, and of course, too, the security people will also have to share a part of the blame because uh, we should not expect them uh, to also serve as the policemen for the different polling booths and then the police centers that we have all over the country. Okay, just to take a final question now before we wrap up. Um, from Business Day, we've seen the story the Nigeria's new due diligence rules draw mixed feelings. Remember that the Central Bank of Nigeria says that anybody who wants to open an account with any bank now, the banks may re require to get their social media handles and all that. So while some people, especially the money lenders, are happy about it, some people are asking how much of inclusion will be if this policy is going to be implemented. And if it's going to be implemented, will it be 100% or there will be some waivers? That, that much is not clear uh, to the public. So, and then who, who can open an account? Must you have social media handles? Or if you do not have social media handles, you cannot open an account? So these things are still shrouded in some kind of uh, uh, mystery. Uh, I don't know what your comments are briefly before we close. Well, my comment is that uh, my grandmother, who is in the village, and grandfather, who doesn't have a social, um, who doesn't have a social media account, just like you yourself have asked, will still not be able to open an account. As of today, they are able to open an account with some of the microfinance banks because the procedure over there is very, very, very simple. When you begin to to this all this uh, complicated into it and all that, you are taking money for circulation and uh, asking people to go and start putting it back under their pillows or in the in the park or in some buses they are custodian in the house and all that which will have a very corresponding effect, negative effect on the on the economy. More importantly, some of the things that um, the government or the CBN is introducing is a violation of the privacy of the individual because we already have the DVN, we already have the national identity number what have you. And of course, too, when you go to the bank to open the bank account, your picture, your passport photograph are put in there. You also take your fingerprints and what have you. So if all these things are already there and all that, why would you again be asking Nigerians to be providing their social media account before you can open an account for them? In fact, asking them to provide some of those information and all that, the man of good opinion, and then just such a person and also compromise the privacy of the individual, which the constitution as a, as a key to them. Let me give you an account. I was watching a foreign television not too long ago, and the American people are protesting very seriously. 
with the issue of uh, CCTV camera being installed in some public uh, places, with the issue of uh, fake identification um, um, a gadget that the police are using, uh, that fake identification gadget is equivalent or similar to the Bible that we have in the country. And we also complain about fingerprints and what happens. What is their complaint? They are complaining that these things compromise their privacy, which the consumer has given it to them. It has also shown that those gadgets are not certification. Hmm. Okay, uh, well, uh, that's, that's the much we can take uh, this morning on uh, that segment of the program, Mr. Tunde. So social media is quite unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that's how far we can go on this segment. We'd like to thank you this morning for coming on the program. All right, thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. That was Mr. Tunde Kolawole, uh, a legal practitioner here in Lagos that joined us on Off the Press so that we can x-ray some of the headlines on our nation, national dailies. I will take a short break and when we return, we'll go straight to our hot topics. Stay with us.